Elizabeth Murray. really physical. You're squeezing the paint out of the tube, which is fine. You're mixing up the paint. It's making something happen with a very sort of fluid material that is constantly somewhat out of control. Harnessing it somehow. Harnessing that energy of the paint. I think that's the primary thing that painting is about. For a couple of years, I've been working with cutting out shapes and kind of glomming them together. You know, like basically making a, a zigzag shape and making a, a sort of a rectangular shape and a circular, bloopy, fat, cloudy shape and just putting them all together and sort of letting the cards fall where they may. I know the shapes are always referred to as cartoony, and they are cartoony and bony and rounded and inflated and sort of wacky. All of these shapes are stuck onto each other in some kind of way, sort of like a weird fence or a weird ladder. Another part of it for me was to use very intense color. With the color and with the shape and with the drawing inside of the shape, really, it's just simply trying to make it work somehow. There are so many different combinations of things. It's like being a safe breaker and you're listening to the, those movies where they've got their ear up against the safe and you're listening for the right click for the right cylinder to like drop down. And then I just felt really like that. Like, I'm just like painting and painting and painting until the right thing happens. I want there to be conflict and I want there to be tension. And yet, somehow I want to make these very conflicting things live together. And not just butt up against each other, but really live together. I do drawings inside the box. And I just kind of like warm up to get my mind into it, you know, like to give myself some place to start from. That's really all they are. It all starts with drawing. I think the thing I remember the most when I was little was the excitement of being able to draw something. I love to draw, and I did it obsessively. And I guess I kind of realized it was a skill that made me feel good about myself. The Art Institute in Chicago totally changed my life. There were people there, the likes of whom I'd never seen before in Little Bloomington, Illinois. I absolutely fell in love with that world. I think as much as I wanted to be an artist, I wanted to be different the way they were different. Because it felt like freedom. Instead of being trapped in your little pendulum skirt and your poppy socks and your style shoes, you could wear big, heavy black boots and put blue makeup on and just, just, you know, and say what you thought. You know, you didn't have to be a nice lady anymore. But the teachers seemed to be there to teach you that you had no hopes and no prospects. And being an artist was one of the most impossible things in the world. 
and you'd better realize that this is a life of suffering, struggle, and you weren't going to be any good anyway. <laughs> You know, I, I think I did it by looking at the paintings in the gallery in Chicago. I would go every day and I would look at this particular de Kooning painting called Excavation. And I would almost like do a dance with it. Oh, he went this way and oh, he went that way. Oh, he smudged this and feeling like the depth of that painting. When you look at it from a distance, it looks like this roiling, boiling pot of paint kind of except the order is in that paint. And when you go up to it, you begin to see like the layers of it. And I sort of deconstructed the painting and I'd go back down to my painting and I would like try to do it. I never got that good, but it made me start to feel my body and my mind. My mind letting my arm make the decision. And when you start to get the control, then your feelings can start to flow. And once that starts to happen, you know, you get on the track and the train starts moving. I just realized this was going to be my life. I really need time by myself, and I always have. And I think when I was a kid, I actually liked to play by myself. And that's not saying I don't need people, because I do. I love the quiet of walking into my studio and looking at my work and then painting. And it just feels like of a piece of my whole life, in a way. Having my kids has made me part of the world as an artist and as someone who works in a lot of isolation. It's really made me deal with life in a way that I absolutely wouldn't have. It's made me have a life and take my mind off myself. That's what they've done for me. They'll be more honest with me than anybody else will. They'll tell me how they feel. And not everybody does that. Which one do you want to talk so what I want to know is, I'm trying to decide whether I put this in the show, and I want to know, just tell me exactly what you think of it. I kind of think I really like it. I just made some big changes in it. The drawings are different, but this is what sort of come out from the drawing. I like it. And I think that if you, of course, what I wanted to say was, it's great, it's good, don't touch it. Put it in the show. But mom, even if you couldn't, even if you were going to leave everything the way it was, you couldn't because it's not like nothing except for that and the chair and the door. Nothing. And the sun. None of it is done. I think. I think that it's all just... <laughs> it isn't a bad thing. I mean, you just... The surfaces aren't thick. Are you bored with this? No, I'm very interested in it. Because you don't, you, I think you, you don't ever leave things. things like that. Yeah, and I'm going to just keep working on it. So maybe, so maybe that would be interesting. No, just that you just leave it. No, I can't do that. Dave is right. You're right, you're right, you're right. I think what I have to do is take out the, the bloopy form and, re, and just, you know, maybe they'll come back and maybe they won't. Maybe i got to take these out for a while and, and look at them. It might be nice again. to see what it looks like when it's just, yeah. Yeah. It might be that they're too much like this person as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. I love the smoke. I think the smoke's my favorite thing. I think I like to go to red and pink. But what about, like, the marks inside the roof, <gasps> the triangles? It just feels like it really is very descriptive. You know, the triangle then becomes the roof. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, what else the is triangle it? is a representation. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. No. The little people inside. I mean, it's still... Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And of course, there's room for interpretation. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. You work that, but, you know, there's the, those people are trying to talk to me. Oh, it's a little, little odd color to see. I thought it was a cat. Oh, okay. You thought it was a cat? Mm -hmm. Oh, it could be a cat. See? Mm -hmm. I still don't know what it is. Okay, that's really good. That's really helpful. Yeah, I think every artist has this. You leave it at night and you come back and you think, oh, I got it, I got it. And then you come back in the morning and it's gone. Like, it looks awful. And that's sort of when I think, why did I go on this journey in the first place? You know, like, what am I doing this for? It's just, um, it's, it's so painful. Then, you know, the next morning you're back at it, side-eyed, pushy-tail, like, trying again. Okay. So... Let's move this painting over here. No, don't even hang it up. My fantasy was that I would get to a certain point and I would know what I wanted to say and then it was, you were on this straight and narrow road and you would never swerve and you would just do your work then. And that's not the way it is at all. Like, get off the path and then get back up again. And I don't think that process ever ends. Let's switch this with this. And I really know certain things are working for me. They make me laugh. Like, oh, this is really silly. And I just enjoy that. Careful. And I think for myself, it's part of what gets me through. I think it's really very similar to how a kid plays. You know, it's like you're in your playroom and you're just picking up these different shapes and throwing them on the wall and then putting them together and seeing what kind of a game you can make out of them. I think that's pretty explanatory of what it feels like to make them and very close to the kind of feeling that I want to get out of them. And I think that I want you to get out of them too.